In these afternoon classes, we're going to begin a series on the Holy Spirit. In the morning, we're talking about Jesus. We've been talking about being conformed to His image. And in these afternoons, we're going to see how that is possible. You, you see cars out on the road. They can't run without fuel. Yep. You have to put gasoline in that car for the engine to run. The car may be new and in perfect condition. But if there's no fuel in that engine, it will not run. And you and I, to be conformed to the image of Christ, we need this Holy Spirit. Now, we've been taught a lot of things about the Holy Spirit. But we know that He's come to glorify Christ. He's come to reveal Christ. There's a lot of emphasis on the results of the Holy Spirit. But we want to talk about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. When you look at the disciples as they follow Jesus, they were always making mistakes. They were struggling. All the way up to the point where Jesus died and rose again. But when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they were completely changed. We know that John is known as the Apostle of Love. But when Jesus first met John, Jesus called him the Son of Thunder. And he named him that because of his character. John was the one that his mother came and said, Let my son sit on one side of the other on the other side. John wanted Jesus to call down fire on Samaria. That is not the apostle of love. But when the Holy Ghost filled him, he made him just like Jesus. And then he became the apostle of love. This first lesson is called the Holy Spirit. We read from John chapter 7. Verse 39. And in John chapter 14, verse 26. And in 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 13. 
basado pale kasa e o siwe pu siwe si o pege si to patre yo ablu pu le si ko to bo yu ko agiri yo khu to ke si le ta khoti di so si ku ti le ta ke ko ke si le ta ma so ski ba ka do sani le ta su ke na ke ta mi ta to a khu lo the holy spirit is god sa so ski a wa da mi jo lo we as christians we believe in the trinity we believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's not three gods. There's one God. And the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son are God. The Holy Spirit is not an influence. But he is a person. He can be grieved. Jesus said he is a comforter. That, that tells us that he's a person. He's not just some influence. When he uses the term holy, and he uses that as his name, it means that the holiness of God has been brought near to you and I. His name, Holy Spirit, teaches us that this is the holiest. You remember when Moses was in that wilderness. He saw the bush burning. God said to him, Take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Now that ground wasn't holy. There's nothing holy about land. But God declared that to be holy. And God said, take off your shoes. Why did God say that? I don't want anything between you and my holiness. The Holy Spirit in the scripture is the one who makes us holy. To be filled with the Holy Ghost is to be fully holy. And that is one of the reasons God fills us with the Holy Spirit. He's come to make us holy. The, we don't have to struggle to be holy. Uh, we just need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and abide in Christ. People have tried to make themselves holy by fulfilling, by living by rules and laws. That old nature loves rules and laws. But the only holiness we can have is the holiness of this Holy Spirit. And we only have as much holiness as we have the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, we must be willing to accept His holiness. You can't go to God and say, give me power. Uh, give, me, uh, give me strength. That's not how it works. 
God fill me with the Holy Ghost and everything the Holy Spirit will bring with him the unseen and unapproachable holiness of God has been revealed it was revealed in the life of the Lord Jesus he brought that to revelation when he came into this world and by the death of the Lord Jesus the door is now open for us to partake in the holiness of God in the Old Testament only the high priest could go into the holiest place but in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ the veil that blocked that way was torn and broken now man has the potential of getting in there with the holiness of God only if he's born again Jesus opened the door for us. Now the Holy Spirit has come to impart the holiness of God. He's come to make that holiness our own. It's not I that lives, it's Christ that lives in me. But he uses this body. He abides in that new creation. We come into union with God. It's done by the Holy Spirit. When God created Adam, he created his body. But Adam was not alive until God breathed that spirit into him. And that's how it worked in that Old Testament time. But in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit comes within us and then he works towards the outside. God's desire is to fill us, to fill us with the Holy Spirit that he might reveal all of the attributes of Christ in our life. In the Old Testament, God was revealed. He is the Father. But then Jesus comes and the Son was revealed. But the final revelation of God is the Holy Spirit. He's been working on this earth for 2,000 years. He's been making people holy, conforming us to the image of Christ, preparing a bride for the Son of God. This is the way God works. From the seen to the unseen. You, you can't see the Holy Spirit but you can see the results of that Spirit. In the Old Testament you could see the fire that covered Israel. You could see the glory of God in the temple. 
But all that was just something you looked at. In the New Testament time, Jesus walked the streets of Jerusalem. If you lived in that day, you could have walked up and seen him. You could have heard him teach this word. You could have heard the Bible before it was ever written. But it was still external. But when Jesus died and went into heaven, after the resurrection, he ascended to the Father. He sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has been on this earth since that day. And he is working for one purpose. And that purpose is God's purpose. The holiness of God in Christ becomes holiness in us when we are filled with the Holy Spirit because he that lives in us is holy. Now some of you aren't filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't understand everything there is about him. I can't understand there everything there is about him. We weren't called to try to figure it all out. We were called to believe. We were called to surrender to God. And if in this school, if you seek the Lord, He will fill you with His Holy Spirit. It's God's will that every Christian be filled. God's, God's whole working in the message of Pentecost, the whole working of God it's God the Father through God the Holy Ghost displaying God the Son through a human vessel called the church. That's what God's intention is. We cannot say that enough. If we don't know the purpose of God, we'll never understand this Bible. We have been made light by Christ coming to live within us. The only way for that light to be revealed is by the Holy Spirit. Some don't think it's important to be filled. It's a commandment. The scripture says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus commanded them to go and wait for the promise of the Father. We cannot reject the Holy Spirit. We can't reject the Holy Spirit any more than we can reject Jesus. We cannot reject God. Many people desire the Holy Spirit. But they desire it just to have joy or to have power. He didn't come to just give us joy and power. Those are the results of the Spirit. But He didn't come in pieces. He comes as who he is. Our greatest desire should be that he would come to make us holy. Whatever else he wants to do, he will do. 
You know, I really believe there's going to be a revival in these last days. I believe the greatest power ever manifested on this planet is just ahead of us. I believe the world is yet to see what God really can do through His church. But it's only going to happen by the power of the Spirit. I used to pray and ask God to do this or God to do that. No longer. Now when I pray, I just say, God, I give you this school. You do what you will. I don't want to limit God. I might ask God to do a lot of things. But it may only be half of what he wanted to do. So I say, God, here's this school. Here's my life. You sent me here. Now you do what you want to do. I'll be here. I'll pray. I'll do what you tell me to do. But God, you do your work. You do what you will to do. That should be the way it is with your life. God wants to do that in your village. He wants to do that in your church. He wants to have his perfect will. But that, that can only happen. As we yield to this Holy Spirit. And let him come in his purifying power. You can't separate his power from his purity. They come together. You can't say just give me power. No, the purity must come with it. You can't say, I only want to just be pure. Everything else will come with it. I don't seek the attributes of the Holy Spirit. I just seek the Holy Spirit. God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I give you my life. I know I need to be filled. It is your absolute will that I be filled with the Holy Ghost. God sent the Holy Ghost just like he sent Jesus. We cannot reject him. And if we ask God to fill us, God will fill us with the Holy Ghost. That's not my promise to you. My promises aren't good. I keep my promises. But my promises are nothing compared to God. Jesus said, if you seek, you'll find. If you hunger and thirst, you will be filled. Amen. Amen. The gifts of the Holy Spirit coming upon us shows us a little bit of the world that we can walk in. You know, sometimes we've been in services. We've seen the great power of God. That is just a little picture of what God really wants to do. He doesn't want to finish in just that one place. He wants to reveal His glory. And not just for one moment. 
But, but for all of eternity. So these little signs that we see. It's only just the beginning of what God wants to do. Now when the Bible talks about the gift. It's talking about the Holy Ghost. But when it talks about the gifts, it's speaking of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When Paul told Timothy not to neglect the gift, the gift that came when Paul laid his hands on him, he wasn't talking about healing or the ability to prophesy. He was talking about the Holy Spirit himself. All of the gifts of the Holy Spirit are in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in me. And the Holy Spirit will use those gifts as He wills. I've been used in many of those gifts. I've not been used in all of them. But whenever there was a need, the, the Holy Spirit would work that gift through my life. He didn't give us the gifts for our, our flesh to play with them. But he gave us the Holy Ghost. All the gifts come with him. And whatever is needed in whatever moment can flow out from that Holy Spirit in our lives. All of the righteousness that we have, all of the righteousness of the flesh, the prophet says it's filthy rags. Nothing that I do in the flesh is acceptable to God. Even my own attempts at trying to be holy and separate good from evil. None of that is acceptable to God. Some souls do earnestly seek for holiness. But they do it in their own strength. Once the Spirit of God is lost, then people try to pretend that He's still there. I've watched people play games. Try to prophesy. But it wasn't the Holy Spirit. To play games with the gifts of the Spirit is blasphemy. I remember one time I was not at the church. A preacher come to that church. And he was preaching. And he called my name. He said, Darren, where are you? He said, God has a word for you. Well, apparently God didn't know that I wasn't there. You see, you don't play games with that. Then he tried to prophesy over my wife. What an awful thing. God never gave us the Holy Spirit so we could play games. He gave us the Holy Spirit that all those gifts come with him. And those gifts are real. Now, 
I'm not made holy by fulfilling rules. I'm holy because the Holy Ghost abides in me. Now, how does the Holy Spirit make us holy? We were speaking about it this morning. He reveals Christ and imparts Christ. The Holy Spirit is dealing with everything in our life that is not Christ. The scripture said he would guide us into all truth. So then everything that's not truth, he will deal with it. What is truth? Jesus said, I am the truth. So the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to us. He reveals all the unholiness in our lives. Sometimes we think things are going really good. But then the Holy Spirit will reveal to us something there. That doesn't end the spiritual walk. He didn't show you that to finish it. He just wants you to remove it and go on. As I walk with the Lord, and God reveals something in me. That does not put me back at the beginning. I just to remove that and keep going on with God. Amen. Walking in the Spirit. He reveals the unholiness in our lives. He shows us Jesus. And as we remove those things that are unholy, then by the Holy Spirit, Christ will take that place in that life. Every area that's cleared in that life. It makes more room for Christ to be revealed. The chief way that God sanctifies us is by His Word. It is the Word of God that He uses. It's not just the Word by itself. But it's God using that word. It's the power of the living God with his word. There's people that can quote the scriptures that are unholy. They don't live for God. There were famous preachers that re were revealed to be in awful sins. You can quote all the scriptures you want. But God must use his word to make us holy. I don't just learn these words on the outside. But those words are applied to my life. The Holy Spirit must have a vessel to manifest his life. He must have a vessel to do his works through. And he expects us to be that vessel. The church is the Lord Jesus' body. 
Satan must also have a body. His, his body is that old nature. So when Paul says, give no place to the devil, that means you can't hold on to anything of that old nature. If we hold on to it, we give ground to the devil. When a person is born again, there's now two characters in that life. Two, two different personalities. When you become born again, a warfare begins. Paul talked about that in Galatians. He said the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the, the spirit against the flesh. And this keeps us from doing what we should. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood. We war against principalities and powers. And the way those principalities and powers come is through that body of the flesh. That's why it must be crucified. We let carnal people operate in that church. If we let them operate in ministries in that church, then Satan has grounds in that church. Carnal people can come to the church. They need to come there so they can get their life right with God. But there's no room in the ministry for carnal people. So, holiness and unholiness are both spiritual. You've been some places. You felt the presence of God. You've been other places. You felt the unholiness there. It, it was spiritual. Holiness. Holiness is the Holy Spirit revealing Jesus through the new creation. And unholiness is Satan revealing himself through that old creation. All that hatred and fighting and all those things. That's all unholiness. Both of them are spiritual. One is Christ being revealed through the new creature. Revealing all the joy and peace of God. And the other is evil. It's Satan manifesting himself through that flesh. I hear people say, I don't know why I said that. I, don't, I know why they did it. Flows out that evil heart. If you walk in the flesh, then you're going to reveal the works of the flesh. But if you walk in the Holy Spirit, you will reveal the, the works of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Paul said that if you walk in the flesh, 
You will do those lusts of the flesh. And you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven if you do. But he said, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We cannot walk in the Spirit if we're not filled with the Spirit. And in the Old Testament, God was revealed. You see the fire. The glory at the temple. The New Testament Christ is there. You could see him with your eyes. But now, you, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Not some building somewhere. But you and I are the temple of the Holy Ghost. If this world will know God, they'll know Him through us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. He comes to make us holy. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. Fill us to full and overflowing. In the name of Jesus.